Hello, Royal Soap Vsauce. X-ray. Ready to go. Cardiac arrest, five minutes. X-ray. Hello, resource. We've got trauma in one. Is he trying to breathe? Oh. He went for a week and just collapsed. Ian, open your eyes for me. Hi. He's had a large stroke. It can cause severe disability or death. We're going to be very fast. That clot is causing the problem. Where is the pain worse than the moment? Yeah. Yeah? And how would you describe that pain? Agony worse than childbirth. Oh. I'm on the beg for a real big favour. I'm full in recess. I've got another standby coming and a flail chest and a traumatic pneumothorax all trying to get in. Stop recess. Stare me. Okay. Sounds like he had a seizure. Okay. Uh, yeah, I've got a patient coming in post VF arrest. They've got a rot. They've got a ROS. ECG shows STEMI. Cardiology come down to us. If you wouldn't mind joining us. I don't know if he's awake or what. Uh, no. So we've got a 53 year old who's had a cardiac arrest. Uh, the paramedics have got to him and they've delivered five shocks and they've managed to get an output back. So he's now got a pulse. Um, so we might need to put a breathing tube down, take over his breathing if he's unresponsive. Hi, Joe. You all right? So we can't see the first of If you're I stable enough. Stable. Yeah. This is why. Hello. Okay. I'm Julia, I'm one of the results to Andrew, one of the senior registrars. This is 50 year old Alan. Witnessed the rest by Y. Why has done CPR prior to our arrival. He was down about three, uh, five minutes prior to us. We've given him five shots so far. On the fifth shot, he regained pulse about 110. Maintained his own airway. He's breathing about 24. Can we get a 12 lead? Is he trying to breathe? Is he trying to breathe? He's, 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 breathing. he's breathing. He's coughing though. I think we might need to take this out. Okay. Um, can I get a good dial in a face? Yeah, Can you pop the top end of the scoop, anybody? Yep. Probably is a STEMI then. We need to take blood. We could just shove an A-line in. Oh, it's coughing, doesn't help, does it? The survival rates are still very poor for patients who have an out-of-hospital cardiac arrest. Blood supply to the heart back again as soon as we possibly can. So we do absolutely everything we can in the hope that this is one of those that will survive. But has anyone seen a gas yet? It's been run. So we'll do a scan of his heart just to see if there's anything going on there. Okay, he's still unconscious. We're a bit concerned that he may have sustained a period of time where he had no oxygen going to his brain during the cardiac arrest and he's quite uh, agitated. Um, so the safest thing is to take over his airway so that he isn't at risk of aspiration. So at the moment, the concern with anyone that's had cardiac arrest is whether there was a period of time where there wasn't much oxygen going to his brain and whether there's any damage from that. Once we've sorted out from his heart point of view and if he's stabilised, we'll do a scan of his head to see if that will give us any more indication if there's anything going on there. But it probably won't give us a definitive answer from that perspective. Okay. It's going to be really difficult to tell until he gets to the point where we can lighten up the sedation and wake him up. Sorry. But it's best that you know now what you're facing. Do you want to witness it? Oh, don't cry. You can cry, mm -hmm. and they will cry, and it's good for them to see that normal emotion and reactions is normal. They don't have to hold it in, and neither do you. That's stress. You will be. You will be. But you are allowed to be upset too. Yeah. How old are kids? I'll, I'll speak to the ICU. Well, because he's 17, you can be ambulance. Then got a 15 year old and a 20 at 11. 
Yeah. Um, crossing everything for you, Manos. Yeah. Have you got that ECG? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that too. Yeah, come on. Thank you. Yes. Oh, no, that's for. Oh. He needs his head scan. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that. I thought that's what you He went for a wee and just collapsed. And that was it. I did not know because I knew he wasn't breathing. The heart tracing doesn't show any evidence of an acute heart attack. Sometimes other things going on in the body can cause problems with the heart, or it might be something that we call a cardiomyopathy, which is an abnormality of the heart muscle. So we're going to get a scan of his head just to see if there's any reason why he hasn't woken up from that point of view. Obviously, we're concerned that there could be brain damage. That's all right, huh? They're just going to keep him sedated. And once we got the results back, we'll see what happens then. What, what's he like? Next Navy. Yeah, he's ex-Navy, man, isn't he? He's in the Navy for how many years? 22 years. So he'll fight it all the way. I know he will. That's the sort of person he is. Initial impressions are that the CT is normal. You need to wait for the radiologist to have a close look at it. I can't see any obvious abnormalities. Certainly no big haemorrhage or anything like that that would explain his cardiac arrest. It's difficult when we still don't know exactly what's caused his cardiac arrest. So whatever happened before could happen again. There's always potential for that. And then the other concern is his brain recovery, really. He'll probably go to intensive care unit for a period of stabilisation and then we'll do an MRI scan of his heart and an angiogram of his heart and things like that over the next few days. There's a chance that there could be an, an issue with his brain, but I think it's really important that she's aware of that at this stage because if something happens and she wasn't expecting it, then it's a massive, massive shock. Um, and whilst it's a shock whenever it happens, at least some understanding of what's going on is really important, I think. Um, yeah. I just hope he does okay. <laughs> Trying to stay positive. <laughs> for the kids. And for you. <laughs> kids need their dad. We've got a standby coming and we're full, so I've got two spaces saved in recess. Can we step a couple down? Alcohol plus quad bike, the most unstable form of transport known to mankind. <laughs> He's got pissed and smashed his quad bike and the police are going to have him, aren't they? Oh. <laughs> Hello. Fresh blood. Yeah. Ten minutes, no problem. Thanks, bye. So, Julie, this is a 54-year-old male found collapsed after vomiting a large amount of fresh blood. So if he starts bleeding out, we can cover our eyes and face, that's all. The indication is that he's still bleeding significantly. Slide. He was found half collapsed out of his bed this evening, um, vomited pure blood, approximately a pint of blood. Blood pressure was initially very low, no other history, he's not on any medication. Okay. Has this happened before? No. No. You're looking quite yellow. Okay. 
The GI bleed is bleeding from anywhere in the GI tract, which is basically the gullet, the stomach, or any part of the bowel. So his blood pressure is definitely on the way down from when the paramedics last did it, and he's got a significant tachycardia. If we could get him cross-matched urgently for four units and four FFP and do an urgent clotting and see what his haemoglobin's like on his gas, we're going to give some turlipressin to account for the varices, but he may well need to um, transfuse him urgently, so his blood pressure's dropped again. Can we just go for the two units of Oneg? Yeah. And just activate MHP just in case. Get the blood into him, really. It is an indicator of something serious going on. You don't vomit up blood for no reason. It can bleed out, so you could lose your whole circulating volume. And if you don't replace it quickly enough or stop the bleeding, then that's when you would go into cardiac arrest. So it can happen in minutes, and that's very frightening and quite difficult to keep up with. So his blood pressure's dropped quite low. I'm, I'm a little bit nervous, I have to say, because he's bleeding into his um, stomach or his bowel. We won't necessarily see it until it comes out. So it can bleed quite a large volume internally before we Julie's see it. Julie's going to be sick. And bring it back with them. Also, what's his pressure? No. He's going to rest. He's just going to go. Why not? To lie down. Pressure where it's the same, sitting up. No. Just giving him a little bit. No. So he's almost arrested at that point. So his blood pressure went very, very low. Uh, it became almost unresponsive, and he, he nearly had no circulation at all. I've bided a tiny bit of time by just giving him a little bit of adrenaline to just try and boost the pressure a little bit whilst we catch up with the blood transfusion. He's trying to be sick, so he probably has got more blood inside that's trying to come out. Is that what he brought up there? Yeah, with clots in. A bit wet, isn't it? What was his turn? Contact the blood into the patient information. You can take your trousers off because they're a bit wet and you're getting quite cold. Do the blood first. So there's quite extensive evidence of bleeding. So that's altered blood. Once it's been in the bowel for quite some time, it turns black. Um, so that's that's all kind of altered blood that's 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 come out. So. Use soap and water, that'll, that'll just muck spread it. It will. Maybe some lean I've ever seen in my life. Just phone the med reg. We need him to come in case he needs an urgent scope. He's actively vomiting fresh blood at the moment, and Melina. I thought he was going to rest then. Oh, but yes. I think he's had at least one unit of blood. I think it's the own egg, though. We're waiting for cross match. Yes. He's, we've activated the major hemorrhage protocol. So we're trying to make sure that we're resuscitating with enough blood products, but we're also trying to make sure that we've got a backup plan so that if, if we don't succeed or he gets worse or he keeps deteriorating, that we can get him to theatre and endoscopy quickly. And then I'm just preparing for worst case scenarios, I guess, if he loses his blood pressure completely or he stops, his heart stops beating completely, we might need to give adrenaline and start full resuscitation from that perspective. Just waiting for more blood products, really. Shit. Becky, put your penny on again. Feel sick. Well, Medreg is coming, aren't they? So, is blood pressure stabilising? Um, fresh frozen plasmid, pack number G052519581. 534L, AV sus D positive. Yeah, happy. The commonest cause is probably some sort of stomach ulcer or gastritis, erosion of the lining of the lung, which is usually caused by too much acid in the stomach. Unfortunately, the commonest cause of that in this country is probably still alcohol excess. People don't realise how much they're drinking, but then they also don't realise how little alcohol it might take to cause an impact. A few beers or a bottle of wine most nights is enough to cause it long-term irritation of the stomach. I was definitely worried at one point when his blood pressure went down to 40 systolic and he went quite grey and started vomiting further blood. Then I was significantly worried at that point. 
But he has responded really well quite quickly, actually. They often need a lot more blood than that to respond. So he could still bleed again at, you know, any time. So we just need to keep our eyes open. Okay. So my name is Stefan Kruber, I'm one of the critical care consultants and I will look after Ian this week. What we don't know quite yet is why Ian had a cardiac arrest. It doesn't look like a typical infarct. It's probably related to an arrhythmia, so to a disturbance of the electrical flow within the heart muscle. The ECG seems to suggest that there is an underlying problem there. Our main worry in this acute situation is the brain. So at the moment we cannot predict if and how much damage the brain has taken from this cardiac arrest. Uh, we won't know before tomorrow and even then it might take a few days before we've got the full picture because the brain might only recover slowly after an arrest. That is our main worry at the moment. Is there anything you would want me to explain in more detail you want to ask? No? Okay. Well, we'll just wait now and see how he wakes up. You can have all the scans in the world, but until you stop that sedation and wake them up, you don't know what's in store for them, really. So we can hear all the beeping. He's just taking a few breaths on his own, that's all. So the machine's doing a lot of the work, and then he will now, as he's waking up, start to take some breaths. We just want it nice and calm and reassuring, so you're probably better than me doing that because he recognises your voice. Okay. Waking somebody up for families is everything. It's very scary for them. They're nervous, they're apprehensive, so keeping them calm as well as your patient is very important. It's gone very hypotensive. He was on six mils of NORAD, which I've turned off now because yeah. the stolic's gone up to nearly 200. So he has been bradycardic and he's been on noradrenaline for the whole time. His blood pressure is increasing and his heart rate is increasing as well. Is there any doctors in? Come on. That's it, no, that's deep breath. That's it, keep going. As you can see, he's very anxious. He's rolling around the bed. He's not tolerating that tube very well, which is a sign why his heart rate and his blood pressure have both shot up. It's agitated a bit more than the tube. Yeah. Ian, 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 Relax, relax. All right, bit of oxygen. Relax, sweetheart. It's okay. All right, darling. Well done. You're all good. Okay. All right. All right. All right, sweetheart. Let's get that rubbish out. All right. I've got you. I've got you. It's me. I've got you. Okay. All right. Stay still for me. That's it. Let's get that rubbish out. That's it. It's all right. All right, sweetheart. It's all right. It's all right. That's strange, just all right. All right. Can you say hello to me? Yeah. Can you speak to me? He's awake now. He's obeying commands. He's neurologically intact. So uh, we're not currently trying to optimize his blood pressure a little bit, but otherwise we just need to wait and see. 
wait until he fully wakes up now. Do we have any problems? Jen, just saying that she's a type two, yes. so we just need to be really careful with her oxygen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone's here apart from the surgeons, is that right? I'm happy for you to start. So just watch, we might get quite a lot of blood. Oh yeah, you've got quite a lot of blood coming out there. Trauma alert, adult male, ETA 10 minutes. So we're just going to give it a little bit of a wash out, all right. Oh, that's cold. Royal State Recess. You're doing a good job, bro. Oh, thank you. Um, can you put a trauma call out, please? Hang on, just one moment. Let me just get the TTL. Hang on one moment. Yeah, so you know I've all the people here when you came in. Yeah. Richard, sorry, yeah. can you just take this call? It's a trauma. So there's a 63-year-old that's fallen off scaffolding, approximately three stories, onto a skip. Um, so he's got open wounds with possible back thigh pelvic injuries it's 60 approximately he's had six shots so the gunshot wound that's coming at 12 we're setting up on six yeah. oh. coming in now more of the tv series on my five Morning everyone, this gentleman is Ken, who is 63 years old. At approximately 9.45 this morning, he's fallen approximately 13 to 15 feet off a ladder, landing feet first on a skip. The mechanism has involved him landing with his legs either side of the upright edge of the skip. He's got a deep wound on the medial aspect of his left thigh, which we are told runs around the posterior aspect of his thigh into the posterior aspect of his knee. It's apparently deep with fatty tissue exposed. His treatment has been spinal immobilization, a pelvic binder, uh, five milligrams of IV morphine, one gram of TXA, one gram of IV paracetamol, and four milligrams of ondansetron. Ken, is it? Ken. Okay. So Ken, Ken, can you hear me? Yeah. Hi Ken, I'm Richard, I'm one of the trauma consultants here. Okay, all right, so from listening to what you've done, we're worried about your pelvis and obviously the, the skin around your thigh and stuff like that, okay? But just because you fell off the ladder, we want to keep you nice and flat for the moment, okay? So we don't want you sitting up or moving your head too much, just in case you've accidentally injured your spine as well, okay? We're going to get some blood off you, and then we're going to take you around for a CT scan, all right? And that's going to give us a much better idea if you've broken anything, okay? If you start having any pain, you just ask, we'll give you some painkillers, all right? We need to give you some antibiotics as well. So we're just going to have a quick look, all right? Keep your, keep your leg nice and still for me. So access wise, has he already got a line got in? Line in with the stupid line in for your okay, lungs. let's get a second line in and then let's think about going to scan. So, so the air does, the air tracks all the way up like into his abdomen. I mean, this is like almost like a burn. It's like deep isolated. I wonder if he's degloved off here. That's the problem. How's your pain? Okay. Um, Okay. Yeah. Fairly substantial. You're probably talking maybe about that long that's wrapping around the thigh. Um, it looks fairly deep, so you can see all the fatty tissue and stuff underneath. So, want to get a CT scan first to make sure there's no bony involvement. Um, if he's disrupted his pelvis, um, then obviously that could turn into a life threatening injury. All right, Cam, I'm just going to give you some antibiotics. All right. Just need to try and stop any infection forming in that cut in your thigh, all right. He's hit the back of the bus and has some kind of seizure event inside the road. Hello there, my name's Andrew. I'm one of the doctors. Where is the pain worse at the moment? Where are you feeling it? All in your back. Anything at all in your belly? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then I've been having chest. 
It's always an anxious moment when you've got somebody in such severe pain thinking, what are the potential causes for this pain? And you, you mentally go through a list and think, what's the most serious? We need to exclude that. What's the next most serious? Let's exclude that. Yeah, okay, to sit up right for me, so I can listen at your back. Well done, that's great. Chest pain in this age group could be anything from uh, muscular chest pain to something potentially life-threatening. The pain's across both sides, is it? Not more to one side? Both, yeah. yeah. Okay, all right. The two things that we would want to rule out as a priority are whether she's got essentially a collapsed lung, what we would call a pneumothorax, air essentially where it shouldn't be. And the other thing is possible pulmonary embolism, so a blood clot in the chest that can make somebody very ill very quickly. It's not sore for me to press in your belly. Not, it hurts there where you're. Yeah. But there, it's, it's painful, but the pain in, the in my back's taking over that. Yeah, okay. And how would you describe that pain in your back? Agony worse than childbirth. Oh. He's fallen like in between a skip and it's gone up. So, mainly worried from a pelvic point of view. Breathe in and hold your breath. Patients are really treated in this department. Sometimes it feels like they're on a conveyor belt and you just literally one after the other after the other. And you just really need to just focus in on the job at hand. So with like a sheer force, this is where you can get an unequal pelvis that can cause blood vessels and, and nerves to be ripped out of where they're supposed to go and stuff and go down. Um, if that's the case, so that's probably the worst case scenario here and there's probably a good chance it's going to be associated with a spinal injury as well. So there's open fracture. So we think everything's just forced up from the bottom, tracking yeah. up into his abdominal cavity. Yeah, yeah, massive open window, yeah. So, on, on the very quickly on the scalp scan, you've broken bits of your pelvis. Obviously, we're still worried about your back. Um, so the, the radiologist, the, the x-ray expert, he's going to go back through all the thousands of slices of scans and make sure your spine's all right as well. Cheers. Some of the more challenging aspects of working within the emergency departments. Not only do you have the stress of trying to manage your trauma, but you've also got the additional stress of everything else that's going on around you. Passenger will be no patient, go home. Let's keep him nil by mouth for the moment. Hi, yeah. So he's got a bilateral inferior superior my fractures, which is an open fracture with a big groin lack that's got a big area of devitalized tissue that might need a joint TNO plastics case. Uh, he's also got a compression fracture of T8 with no neurology. The thing we're worrying about at the moment the reason we need to get the plastic surgeons involved is because he's got a bit of the inside of his thigh where the energy is like ripped the skin off away from the muscle on the soft tissue. And when you do that, you can compromise the blood supply, which means if you don't do anything for it over the next few days to a week, that would all die off and just sloth away. And then you'd be left with this massive gaping hole. You could end up becoming really septic and even losing his leg. So it's really important that we've identified this early and make sure that he gets the right treatment at the right time to stop any of these complications from happening. Ah. Oh, Ted. Oh. Okay, all right. First things first for you, Georgia, we need to get your pain better. Okay. Oh. So we're going to get you some more medication. Oh. Is there any chance you could be pregnant? No. So we're going to get an x-ray of your chest as well, then. Yeah. We're going to get some blood tests too, and then we'll know what's going on with you. Priority number one is we get your pain better, so we'll um, yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. get you the gas in there and, and see if that makes you more comfortable. All right. Sorry for swearing. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Yeah, just bear me one moment. Yeah, do you know where TTL is? Take a few gulps on that and then we'll get set forward for your x-ray, okay? Hopefully you'll find this helps quite a lot with your pain. X-ray, resus two. Okay, so we start, take a deep breath in, hold it there, and breathe. 
breathe normally. And that looks fine, so there's no collapsed lung. I'm also looking for air underneath the diaphragm. There isn't either of those signs, so that's good. Thank you. Okay. Um, your chest actually looks fine. Okay, so there's no air where it shouldn't be. There's no, uh, what we call a pneumothorax. So I'm not too worried about your lungs. So we're doing a couple of blood tests that will tell us about the state and health of your pancreas, um, as well as the liver itself. Um, I'm when... so sorry, but I can't help you. I wouldn't have rang if I hadn't have been here. You need to be here. You need to be here. You're in the right place. Okay. We just need to get your pain better. Well done. I've got the arrhythmia is going to go to four, and the triple A coming in there. A couple of blood tests froze the spanner in the work slightly. Assuming that this is all going to be pancreatitis, uh, amylase is entirely normal. Um, but our other differential was a blood clot to the chest. But the test for that is also yes. entirely negative. So we're back to square one at the moment, not quite knowing what's causing this pain. How are you feeling? The pain is just okay. dizzy and a bit. So I've spoken to my colleague from the surgical department. They're going to come and have a look at you. Um, the only thing that we have picked up is that something called your lactate is quite high. It's basically a, a byproduct of body stress. Um, so it tells us you, your, your body is fighting something. Um, the fact that the pain's getting better is a good sign. Um, we just need to now find out what's, what's causing it. Yeah, All right. Thank you. No worries. Thank if you have any questions at all, come, you know, just come and let me know and I'll uh, come over to you. We'll see you here. Hello, Reese. Okay. I think finally at that point where we've excluded the, the top three or four real nasty things and actually anything that we find from this point onwards, we know actually we've got a bit of time to deal with. So we're going to move her to a different area of the emergency department, off to see the surgeons, uh, and they will take over her care from now on. Two porters, please, Teresa, thank you. Have you noticed you've been getting any ulcers in your mouth at all? Somebody needs to put me a cannula in under ultrasound. Katie can't do it. Hello, Stoke Resource. Hi. Yep. His stroke team accepted him. He's got no head injury, no doctor. We have a 72 year old patient with a large stroke. He's got a dense weakness on the left side of his body. Can't speak. And it's just affecting him severely at the moment. So this is the patient. Now if you look at this scan, you can see this is very high dense here. The stroke score is 25, which is a high stroke score. So it's possibly supplying the vital part of the brain, which is um, cause, you know, causing this, uh, the symptoms. So it's usually not this bad. When somebody is having such a big stroke, it means the vessels are not supplying oxygen to that part of the brain. Hi. So your husband has a stroke affecting one side of the brain and that's actually pretty much blocked the vessel. Now, with such a stroke, there's a chance, 50% chance, that if it progresses, it can cause severe, um, you know, either disability or death. Now, we are aiming to get the clot out. We're going to be very fast now. We're going to take him straight away to the interventional suite. It's all going to be fine, sir, okay? We're just going to take you down for a procedure. This is procedure is to, uh, you know, get the clot out, which is causing this problem for you, this, um, you know, this stroke, okay? Uh, just to warn you, just, uh, with the stroke, there's a risk of uh, you know, the vessel rupturing and um, or the stroke progressing. But uh, the option of doing nothing is the worst, you know. Stroke is a devastating condition. If the symptoms are severe, it causes permanent disability. Being locked in or locked in syndrome is like a curse. It's a state of leaving where you cannot move. Your, all your functions are completely void. You all go fine. Looks like he's a fighter, right? Yeah, he will. He'll get there. It's the part of the brain which is responsible for speech, for motor functions. Motor functions when I see any movement, you know, the leg, uh, arm, and the face. That clot is causing the problem. Operate on a patient's brain, and the way we operate by using x-rays, you know, it's you don't get a second chance. 
it's because the brain vessels are just a few millimeters in uh, diameter and when you move just a few millimeters on either sides you can cause a rupture when that happens the patients can actually die from bleeding into the brain can i have a neuron max uh 90 please give me a second can i have a flow switch please it's always there's a high pressure every time you do a procedure you think you know what you're doing okay let's move but every time uh, you are faced with a new challenge and it's a new learning process and every time things can be totally different thank you this particular clot is exceptionally difficult because of the location which is deep into the brain okay. stents deployed can i have a timer on and also the size of the vessel it's a smaller vessel if it doesn't open up i'm just thinking do we have um, a three true three yeah let's have a look go for it now now keep going i don't know if we got the clot or not just check for any clots in there sometimes you can get the clot out in the very first attempt then it may be within the syringes because of the suction no, no. maybe we have to go back again let yeah let's we have to go with a smaller one i think yeah Just give me the the wire again back. That just a few seconds of delay is what matters for the patient's life or death. If you don't have a team which is quick, you are faced with a situation where it's too late. Yeah. Okay, you can push. All right. Okay, now we placed here a device. You can see the device into that clot. Look right now. Yeah, we got the clot. Yeah. Just, just, just hang on. I'll show you. The clot here. This is the device. Here's the clot. Yeah, this one here. The main bulk of the clot, I think, looks like. Yes, everything is open up. Keep going. See that branch which was not filling. Now it's filling nicely. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. It's all good. Excellent. Okay, we are finished. All right. all finished i think it went very well it's we got the clot out within two attempts it's it's not bad considering it was very distal clot it's like the universe you don't know it's always uh, some you know you never know anything till uh, it shows itself i'm hoping that he should have a, a reasonably good outcome but when we don't know it's always a element of uncertainty always find out where he is uh, hi where is he michael michael oh good yeah this is looking at me now yeah good how are you can you look towards me yeah well done excellent trying to move the leg which is a good sign Yeah, there's some movement in the leg as well. Early days, but positive signs. So you're showing some some signs of improvement. So I'm hopeful. So, Michael, I'm going to go and have a word with your wife. Okay, I'll come back to you. Okay, I'll let you rest a bit and then come back to you. Okay. It's very good news. We managed to get the clot out. It's it was uh, like something like this, like wow. pea size. and uh, um and also i've seen i just saw him straight after the procedure he's got some early signs of improvement like a little bit of movement in his arm he's looking towards me last time when he saw he was just yeah. he couldn't that's called you know some what we call medically like inattention but yeah. he was uh, now when he could follow my he could follow commands he was when i told him to look towards me he looked towards me he was i told him to squeeze my hand he was trying to squeeze my hand but still um, you know it's yeah. early days but at the moment i'm my concern is his recovery yes. okay so yeah. of course we need to find out what why this is happening but 
it's just come out of such a major uh, episode of uh, you know a huge stroke looking at the initial response i think i'm positive but there's no guarantees with anything no, you know so I understand that yeah Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll be in touch. I'll be coming again tomorrow to see you. Yeah. Uh, you can get some rest now. At least he's, he's okay. Yeah. Remember one thing, one step at a time. It's fine. I always tell the patients, as long as you have the will and you keep going, you will get there. Yeah. Don't give up. So, you know, he'll, he'll get there. All right? Thanks. Thank you. Thank okay. you so much. Take care. Hi. How are you? How are you, darling? Mm -hmm. Okay. You tired? Yeah. I got reach out. Love you. It's okay. You're gonna be fine. You just need sleep. Just need rest. Okay. Be on out here, look. Dad. What is him? Sweat. How are you doing? It's rich. Hi. Yeah. Rich. Good. <laughs> See you smile. Well done. Well done. It's just absolutely like a miracle. He's the kindest, sweetest person. He's retired. He used to be a magistrate. He's never stopped. He always cares for people. He'll do anything for anybody. He doesn't deserve this, but who does? Who does? I'm just so relieved. Really so relieved. Oh, I feel you. Mm -hmm. Say it again. Oh, I feel you. Arsenal work? No. <laughs> Is that what you said? Arsenal? No, it's Manchester United. Mm. What? Arsenal one. <laughs> what do <are> you like? <laughs> what do you like? Football. Yeah. Big one, Dad. This is your last one. No more. Hi, I'm Julie, TTL. Hello. Okay, got a lady who's been hit by a motorbike while crossing the road. Hello, everyone, so at recess. You've come back from dinner just in time. Yeah. Hiya. Oh, yeah. Hello. Mm, good day at school. Mm -hmm. Nice pyjamas. Mm -hmm. We're let into people's lives like no one else. We see things that no one else sees. Knowing that you made so much impact on someone's life is amazing. Okay. Yeah. How are you feeling? Relieved, actually. I'll you know, be able to sit here with the kids and the wife. If it wasn't for the wife, I wouldn't be here. Yeah. They think it's genetic because they've got no signs of anything being blocked or... I've had no so, warnings, no, no nothing. warning signs. My heart so, just decided to stop. Most inconvenient. Yeah. The fact that you only know your patients for a very short time span, you develop a relationship very quickly and the treatment that you give is very instant. Getting there now, on the mend. It's just my pelvis now. They're more concerned over that because it's got a fracture in it if it's opened up a little bit more. So as soon as I've had that scan, I know a lot more. He was in a cherry picker and he was about 15 feet up in the air tending to the roof. The actual uh, cherry picker itself, the bucket, the cradle, has actually come off with him in it. So if we can get a primary survey, blood's off for the chest x-ray and then we'll go to scan. Extend the arm. That's it. Oh, when you're that close to death, every second counts. She's 89, yeah. hit by a motorcycle. Oh. She's got over six inches by two inches, loss of tissue. Head planted on the floor, mm. neck flexed backwards. Roll. Oh. Oh, my neck. She may have a cervical spine injury. Needle from the arterial line. 
He's young. We need to do everything we can. I just wanted just to stay alive. That's all I wanted, just to stay alive.